Hello, YouTube. I am Michelle. I'm the RV living hobbyist, and I have been sewing for the last 30 ish years. So I want to teach you to sew. I've had a few requests and I'm going to start at the very beginning. So we are going to learn the back stitch and I'm going to be making a pillowcase and you can sew along with me. Okay, we are going to measure for our pillowcase. So how much fabric do you need? You want to take a pillowcase that you already have that fits your pillow and you're going to measure from one end to the opposite on the short end of your pillow case and add an inch and then you are going to take the measuring tape again and measure the long side of your pillowcase. And then you are going to double that length and add an inch. And the reason we're doing that is because we are cutting one long rectangle and we are going to fold it in half and stitch the two long edges and leave the short edge open on the one side to be able to slide our pillow in and out. If you don't have enough to cut a very long piece and fold it in half, but you have enough to cover your pillow, you can also take those same two measurements and just cut two pieces of fabric. You don't have to double the long edge. So just measure your short edge, add an inch, measure your long edge, add an inch, and then cut two pieces of that fabric that size. So for this project, you are going to need some fabric enough to go all the way around your pillow and have a little bit of excess on each side. You're gonna need a thimble, some scissors to cut your fabric, thread shears if you desire, but you can use your regular scissors for that if you would like. You're gonna need needles, beeswax, and thread, preferably thread that matches your fabric. So hopefully you've gathered your supplies and I forgot to tell you in my previous video, but you want to wash dry and iron that fabric before we get started on the project. So if you haven't done that, please go do that and come back to the video. Alrighty, we are about ready to get stitching. We're going to wax our thread first. No matter what thread you use, make sure you use a wax because it will help strengthen your thread. It will help prevent some of your knots. It will help those fibers to lay down properly on your thread as it goes through the fabric. You may need one of these little tools. And I don't use this, but if you do, it is a needle threader. And this piece comes attached with a little piece of metal floss. Mine is broken, but I'm going to show you how to use it. Just pretend it's attached. So you're going to take your needle and where the eye is or the hole, you're going to stick that metal floss through. Then you are going to take your thread and push it through the metal floss. and then pull that floss back through your needle and there you are now threaded. Now, you can knot your thread one of two ways. You can tie a knot in the end of your thread as such, or you can double knot it or however you wanna knot it and then you will be sewing with a double thread. I don't sew with a double thread, I sew with a single thread. So I will show you how to do that. You will thread your needle. I eyeball it. I can show you that later if you want. If anybody wants, just let me know. Now, you're gonna leave one tail longer than the other. You are going to 
start on the side of your fabric for your pillowcase that has the fold. And if you are not sewing with a fold, if you are sewing with two separate pieces of fabric, just start on one of your corners because you'll just sew all the way around three corners instead of sewing two edges like I am. So on the side that has the fold, you are going to take up about a quarter of an inch, which I should put my thimble on and set a good example. A quarter of an inch ish and pull until you have about an inch for a tail. And grab hold of that tail because it'll get in your way and it may still get in my way because I'm using a camera. But you're going to do a couple of stitches in the exact same place or as close as you can get it to the exact same place. You're going to be doing about three or four stitches this way. And that will create a nice little knot in your fabric and you don't have to worry about your thread coming out and you can stitch with just this one piece. So then you're going to start your stitch right next to where your knot is and you are going to again take up about a quarter of an inch and then you're going to go right back where your thread is and then when you poke the needle out you're going to poke it just a little bit past your thread where it's popping out here and then that will be your first stitch there. Let's get that tail out of the way. And then you will continue that way until you get either to the end of your fabric or close to the end of your thread. Now what happens if you run out of thread, you say? I will show you. So you're going to do each stitch and have your thread right in the middle. Start right at the beginning of that last stitch. Now if you get a knot, don't keep pulling. Pull back. And sometimes it'll look like this and you can just pull with a needle and pop it off. So let's pretend that I ran out of thread. I have maybe four inches of thread left and I know that's not going to get me to the end. So I'm just going to make another knot just like I did at the beginning of my project. So you're just going to make a few stitches right in the same spot. then clip your thread about an inch away from your fabric and leave a tail. And then you would start your next row of stitches right next to it and continue on until you finish your stitches. I apologize, I forgot to record the audio for this clip, but here you can see I am just making my final stitches for the pillowcase and I am keeping those stitches right in a row just like I showed you with the darker thread and once I get to the end I am just going to make a few stitches right in the same place to finish out that seam. Just right here. My thread did get knotted. I just reminded you there to pull back on the thread before you pull it tighter so that your knot will come out. Now 
And I think I did three stitches. You want to do three or four stitches right in the same spot to make it a nice sturdy knot. And then cut your tail and make sure you leave about an inch. We will take care of those tails when we finish our seams. And so you can see all my stitches nice neatly in a row. There's the back side, it just looks like a straight line for the most part. And then you can see on the inside, those stitches are sturdy. They are not going to pull out and our fabric looks nice and clean on the, ins on the outside. Okay, so you should have finished your back stitch all the way down your pillowcase on both sides. If you cut two pieces of fabric, you would have seamed three sides and leave one side open, which is where your pillow will go. And you're wondering, well, what do I do about these seam allowances? They're going to fray. Well, yes, if we don't finish them, they will. So next week, I will show you how to finish them in a way that is nice and neat and it will look pretty. Um, but if you don't have the patience for that and you just want to leave your seam allowances, the better option than leaving them is using pinking shears. So these are my pinking shears. I don't know if you can see how they have kind of a jagged edge on them. But what you do with these shears is you will cut your fabric. Don't cut through the seam allowance, just cut on the outside of it. And that way the edge on the seam allowance is like that. After a while it will wear and it will fray and it'll kind of look like that, but that's okay if you don't care what the inside of your pillowcase or your garment looks like. That's fine. It's not going to come all unraveled on you. If you don't use pinking shears and you just leave it, you will get edges like this, which are annoying when you are putting something on that you didn't finish the edges and you got these long strings and they catch when you're putting things on. So I would suggest if you are not going to finish your edges, then at least use pinking shears. But next week, I'll show you how to finish them if you would like. And I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you subscribe. I hope you follow along. And I hope you like it. And if you have anything you want to practice, anything you want to learn, put a comment. And I, I will read them, I promise. So I'm working on my video editing skills. And hopefully my videos will keep getting better. But in the meantime, I hope I can teach you something. So I hope you have a wonderful day.